We've had a ton of speakers come through this year, and this is one of my favorite parts of the year is making the best of videos. Even though I'm unqualified, even though they're meaningless, these are the Cheap Audio Man 2023 Speaker Awards. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the best speakers of 2023 at every price point. The winner of the Speaker of the Year under $200 is the Numi. Silk 4, it's a little speaker, four inch woofer, one inch soft dome tweeter, built really, really well. It has a very nice finish. Right now it's $149. When it first came out, I think it was $190. So $149 is the exact same price as the Mica RB42s, which is a very well-respected speaker. Numi Silk 4s though, a little bit easier to drive. I think they both have a very neutral sound signature. And I don't talk about this speaker enough, but when I was going back and looking at all the speakers that I reviewed this year, there weren't a ton under $200. And luckily this one sounds awesome. With a subwoofer, this could be a perfect desktop system. These could be rear surrounds. These could be height speakers. These could be Dolby Atmos speakers if you angled them up at your ceiling. Very versatile speaker, well-built, and there's only one left in stock. <laughs> We didn't have a ton of speakers under $500 that came in this year. However, there were a few notables. Coming in at $419 a pair is the Hiko Aurora. And for me, they were the best speaker under $500 that I listened to this year. And these awards are gonna be limited to speakers I actually heard this year. So they may not be brand new speakers, but they came through my doors this year. Two-way speaker with a high sensitivity. 90 dB sensitive. And that's usually uncommon for a speaker of this price and this size. 170 millimeter woofer, which equates to about 6.79 inches and a one inch soft dome tweeter. Very low frequency response on the bottom end from 32 up to 45,000 Hertz on top. And is probably the most attractive speaker I've ever reviewed under $500. The build quality is outstanding. One thing about this speaker that is the standout, in my opinion, is how big it plays and how hard it hits. And it doesn't sacrifice bass power for mid-range clarity. I do think there's a bit of a scoop out in the mid-range, in the lower mid-range, and then the upper mid-range comes a little bit forward. Top end is a little bit rolled off in my opinion. And even though that might not be my first choice for a speaker's tonality, you can't deny just how good this speaker is. With a little bit of EQ, I got this speaker sounding exactly how I wanted it to sound. Out of the box, it may sound exactly how you want it to sound. A little bit warmer in the lower mids, a little bit forward in the upper mids, and a relaxed top end. And it's super efficient. So if you don't have a ton of power on tap, this speaker is still gonna play wonderfully. Great value. If you're interested in a high value speaker, check out this entire line. Really impressed. That's why the Aurora 300 wins the Speaker of the Year under $500. The Speaker of the Year under $1,000, probably no surprise here if you've watched the channel at all, is the Q Acoustics 5020. I was absolutely amazed at just how good these speakers are. To me, I like these speakers sonically better than the more expensive Concept 30s, which come in at $1,300 a pair. 5020s come in at $900 a pair, and if you're in the UK, they're even cheaper. 87.9 dB sensitive, so not super hard to drive. One inch tweeter that's hermetically sealed and also isolated from the enclosure. This speaker has a lot of stuff going on. And Q Acoustics, one of their kind of reoccurring themes when it comes to design and building a speaker is to keep everything as isolated as it can be. Reduce resonances. And you can really hear it because instruments are separated out. The surprising thing for me with the 5020 was just how dynamic this speaker is. Compared to the 3020Is, compared to the Concept 30s, compared to their powered or active speaker, I think the 5020 more dynamic, 
punchier, more exciting in the mid range. And because it's more exciting, because I feel like it's not adhering to that kind of flat forward mid range tonality, it's just a fun speaker. But this one has more richness, more personality in the lower mids than some of the other speakers that kind of just give you just the facts. This one's just funner, in my opinion. Sound great, look great. The floor standards are awesome too. They are amazing. And I couldn't recommend this speaker more. How cool is it that I got to review a speaker that is on heavy discount? And that speaker, no, well, luckily it sounded really, really good. That speaker is the Wharfdale Diamond 12.4, a floor standing speaker that's coming in at $750 per pair that are huge that are built great and that sound awesome. Original price on these speakers was $1,300 a pair. So because they're on sale, they are now the speaker of the year, floor standing speaker of the year, under $1,000. Six and a half inch bass driver, six and a half inch mid-range driver, one inch textile dome tweeter, 88 dB sensitive, frequency response, 40 up to 20,000 Hertz, 50 pounds a piece. Some Wharfdale speakers in the past have a really rich, almost warm sensibility to them. These, not so much. This just sounds like a very solid, dynamic, fun, neutral speaker with extension. The Diamond 11 series was super warm, super warm, but it was cool because it leaned into that warmth. The 12.2 is very neutral, but you get the 12.4s in there, now you're getting a ton of dynamics. And at $750, this is an absolute steal for these speakers. <laughs> Under $1,500, the speaker of the year is not just the speaker of the year. It's a whole bunch of stuff of the year. It is the Klipsch 9s. One of the biggest surprises I've had with a product this year was with the Klipsch 9s and the 7s. Retail price on the 9s is $1,499. But what you're getting here is basically a Klipsch Heritage speaker. Huge speaker. It is so much Fun. So it's a powered speaker, has a phono preamp, has HDMI arc in it, has an app, three band EQ in the app, Bluetooth, all the stuff, designed beautifully, and just a very fun speaker. Other speakers are gonna be able to beat it in mid-range clarity. Other speakers are gonna be able to beat it in bass speed and bass clarity, but no other speaker can beat it at its price for the fun factor. If I could only have one setup, limited space, limited budget, it would be the Klipsch 9s. So much fun, huge value, and a lot of times they're on sale. A lot of times you can find this speaker for $1,200, $1,300. Amazing value for money because you're not having to buy an amplifier. Technically, you don't have to buy a DAC either or a phono stage. Bonkers, amazing product. And it's got that vintage vibe. Love it. Speaker of the year under $2,000 is the PMC Prodigy One. What an awesome surprise. Transmission line bookshelf speaker. So much fun, super dynamic, really awesome, exciting top end. I love this speaker, love it. It's coming in around $1,700. The distribution in the US is, you gotta kinda dig for it. I'll put links to places that you can buy it in the US. Smaller compact package, but because of that transmission line, you're getting a ton of bass out of this thing. Clean bass, fun bass. Even though it rolls off at 50 hertz on the bottom, still super punchy, super fun, super clean bass too. Clean mid-range. Awesome top end, 87.5 dB sensitive. So most of the speakers on today's list are actually not super hard to drive. They're not all easy to drive and all of these are gonna benefit from a little bit of extra juice. But usually to get this much bass punch out of a speaker, you're looking at a sensitivity of like 85 dB. These 87 and a half, five and a quarter inch woofer and one inch soft dome tweeter. Don't let the five and a quarter inch woofer fool you. It punches like a six and a half inch woofer because of that transmission line. Really good speaker. And the best speaker over $2,000 just by a hair is the Arendal 1723 Monitor S. Just blown away by the speaker. I just did the review like yesterday. So if you wanna check out that full review, click at the end of the video. Maybe I'll put a card right here. Blown away with this speaker. I literally have not one negative thing to say about this speaker. It's amazing.
perfect mid-range, perfect bass, very versatile, somewhat sensitive. It's just a Triumph. It's a perfect speaker. And since it is $2,049, it's not like it's $5,000. It's not like it's $10,000. So this speaker, to me, really is probably the first perfect speaker. The cool thing about this speaker coming in at $2,000 is now that my price is kind of eking up, I'm listening to more and more expensive things, there's probably going to be a lot of other speakers that I haven't heard that are within the $1,000 to $2,000 price range that are probably going to be fantastic. But as it sits right now, the Arendals are the best speaker that I've heard over $2,000. Yes, you have the Klepsch Cornwall 3s, previous generation, which are amazing, right? So that's probably the best speaker above $3,000 is the Klepsch Cornwall. Okay, yay! Klepsch Cornwall 3s made the list. Okay. Yes, but for a new speaker that I've had in my house, on my electronics, in my room, with my music, Arendals, so good. So good, in fact, that I emailed them last night saying, can I buy these? So the Arendals 1723 Monitor S are going to be staying permanently in my house. So that's it. What did I miss? Oh, also the Bucard P300s, getting an honorable mention. I don't think they're, my preference personally, I like the Prodigy 1s better than the P300s, but the P300s are great. And I actually think the P300s are better than S400 Mark IIs from Bugard. I thought the Prodigy ones were better. So what did I miss? Put it in the comments what you think I missed, what I should have talked about. Again, only speakers that I've heard this year. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far and you're not subscribed, just nail that subscribe button. Give this video a like. If you want to support the channel, I've got Patreon. I've got affiliate links. I've got the thanks button down at the bottom of the video. A whole bunch of ways to support the channel. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen maybe through one of these speakers of the year and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.